Hey guys, this is Eddie here, and I am going to uh, explain how an astrolabe works. This is much larger than an actual astrolabe, but it is one that we can use for uh, demonstration purposes. But before showing the details of how an astrolabe works, I really want you to understand what is going on in the sky so that if you have a good mental model of why this works, you'll be able to understand how to do it. So, to do that, let's zoom on over to my computer where I'm using Starry Night software. That is the horizon line. You can see the sun, and I am going to start everything moving like that. The sun rises in the east, sets in the west. And I've also labeled a couple of stars, Betelgeuse and Rigel, which also rise in the east and set in the west. And the interesting thing about this is, is that on a particular day, and I've chosen October 6th, if you know where one star is, you actually know where every other star is in the sky. Let me move it a little bit further forward. If you know where one star is, you know where every other star is in the sky. And on October 7th, the day that I've chosen over here, if you know where Rigel is or Betelgeuse, you would also know where the sun is. How would you know that? That's because the ancients took a lot of record keeping, figured out those things. But the key idea of using the astrolabe, and I'll show you this in just a second, is we are going to find one star, it doesn't matter where it is, located in the sky, which fixes all of the stars in the sky, and will also position the sun where it goes in the sky. And once we know where the sun is in the sky, we'll know what time of day it is. And here's why. When the sun is at there, that's noon. When the sun goes right down, that's sunset. And so knowing the position of the sun tells you the time of day. Let me translate all this to our astrolabe. Here is the astrolabe. If you take a close look at this, because the ancients did not have plastic and so they couldn't go and have stars on plastic above a, a field, they had to come up with another way to do it. And the way that they did it was making this metal overlay. I wish I remembered the name. I should have looked it up before the video and cut out points. So this point, which I've labeled in red, represents Rigel. This point, which I labeled in green, represents Betelgeuse. There's a point for Altair. There's another point over there. Each of these points represents points in the sky. And for a particular day, like October 2nd, let me turn this over and use my little chart. There is September, there is October, October 2nd, right about there. If I wanted to look at it from a, at an astrological point of view, is in Libra. So it's past Virgo, it's about a third of the way in Libra. And this is just like a little handy chart. But I will put a yellow piece of paper where the sun is on that day. So it's about a third of the way, there's Virgo, it's about a third of the way in Libra. That means that the relationship of the sun and these two stars on that particular day is this, watch it. I'm just gonna have it go across the sky. There's the sun setting in the west. There are those two stars rising in the east. A little bit later in the day, the sun is rising in the east, and those two stars are over there. So what we have here is exactly the same as what we have over there on our computer. It's a representation. On a different time of the year, the sun might not be there, but the sun might be there. And so there would be the sun in relationship to those stars. On a different time of year, it might be there. So step one is 
to figure out what day it is and by using this chart on the back, position the sun in the right place. Now we know the, the relative positions of those stars. The second step is to actually find your fingers in the way, Jennifer, uh, uh, I thought. Uh, the second step is to actually find where one of those stars is in the sky. So let's do that right now. And for the fun of it, I am going to go and make believe that Betelgeuse is rising in the east. So, luckily, on the back of my astrolabe is this little gizmo. I wish I remembered the name to it. But I can use it to sight Betelgeuse. I'm going to hang it from this ring to make sure that I'm level. I'm going to go like that. Whoa, there is Betelgeuse. And when I look over here, I can read how high Betelgeuse is in the sky, okay? 5 degrees, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 degrees up in the sky. That's all this gizmo is, is a little handy device to sight Betelgeuse. But I know now that Betelgeuse is rising and it's 30 degrees in the sky. So, let's take a look over here. Betelgeuse was the green one. I should have mentioned earlier, and I will mention now, that this line, just the same as this line over here represents the horizon, and then those lines over there are 10 degrees up in the sky, 30 degrees up in the sky, 50 degrees up in the sky. You've got the exact same thing over here. All of these lines that go like this, this part where my hand is above my hands represents the visible part of the sky, and below my hands represents the part where it is below the horizon. Same as here. Above my hands is the visible part of the sky. Below is below the horizon. So, let us go. And I will go and make Betelgeuse 30 degrees up in the sky. And that tells me that the sun on that particular moment is actually below the horizon. And it's below the horizon. And I can read off what time it is because the very top is noon, the very bottom is midnight. So midnight, one, about 1.30 a.m. That's when the sun is over there. Here's something just to make sure that you understand it. Let's take a look at when the sun is about 20 degrees up in the sky. When the sun is about 20 degrees up in the sky on this particular day, I can tell what time of day it is. Okay, so A is uh, noon, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, it's midnight. 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., 8 a.m., about 7.30 is where uh, it is. And although it's daylight out, because I can't see it, if I were able to, Betelgeuse would be right over there and Rigel would be right over there. And for the fun of it, let's do that. Let's go and make the sun about, uh, what did I say? 20 degrees up in the sky. So 20 degrees up in the sky, I'm just going to have to approximate, is between those two lines, I would say, about there. Look at that. There's where Betelgeuse is. There's where Rigel is. And it's about 7.50 a.m. So what we have here is a metal representation of exactly the same thing here. Quick summary. Step one you find something in the sky that you recognize like Betelgeuse and you use the back to see how high uh, that Betelgeuse is in the sky and you actually go and take the point of Betelgeuse and put it at the correct position which fixes all of the stars in the sky with the exception of the Sun. The Sun you have to know what day of the year it is. Step two 
you find what day of the year, you translate that to um, astrological talk, and you put the sun on the right location. And now this entire astrolabe is fixed according to what the real sky is. The last step is if you want to read the time, you can go and find the sun and read the time right over there. So, uh, these come in smaller models that you can actually carry around with you instead of that. That's how an astrolabe works.